Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give a talk in this nice city, in the nice uh, workshop. Uh, and this morning I'm going to talk about uh, the application of algebraic surfaces, the theory, uh, to the study of ODE, ordinary differential equations. Maybe I have a little time to explain the detail of the problems on the title. But anyway, I would like to explain the relationship between algebraic surfaces and the ODEs. So what is uh, ODE on an algebraic surface? So the ODE uh, in my talk is the most simple one, this one. So here P and Q are polynomials. So usually we consider this uh, ODE over a real number of fields. So here D is the degree of the, uh, of the ODE or the degree of the rational function. The right hand side is a rational function. <coughs> so we know uh, in 19th centuries, may, uh, several great mathematicians studied this problem. Actually, uh, they use geometry to study the ODE. For example, Dabu and uh, Pangare and uh, Simon Ayers. Pangre introduced a new uh, parameter, t, to this equation. Then the equation can be written like this. So usually in a textbook we use this form. Actually, um, Dabu is the first to study this problem by using complex geometry. So Dabu, uh, the first idea is uh, we needed to consider the complex solutions of, to this equation. The second is we need to consider the solutions at infinity. So this means we extend the ODE to the complex projective plane. So this is the equation in ho homogeneous coordinates in uh, Dabu's paper. So Dabu defined the singular point of this equation. So the single point is just the uh, common zero point of the two polynomials. He defined uh, the multiplicity of the singular point. So in, in, the new uh, in the modern notation, this is just the intersection point, intersection number of P and the Q at the point P, at the common zero point. So he computed the number of singular points uh, of the ODE of degree D on the plane. So this is the number. Uh, in modern uh, mathematics, we can use uh, 10 numbers to compute this uh, number of singular points. So what is an uh, ODE on an algebraic surface? Yeah, for our algebraic geometry, this is very simple. It's just a uh, defined by alpha. Alpha is a long zero monomorphic one form or rational one form. So usually we, uh, for convenience, we uh, usually cancel the one dimension zeros and the, the poles. So alpha is written like this, S times omega. Omega is a twisted, uh, holo twisted holomorphic uh, forms. Here, S is uh, a section of some nine bundles. So S gives a divisor. This the one dimension zero divisor minus the pole divisor. So this is denoted by the divisor of the one form. OK, here, uh, omega is a twisted one form. Uh, there is no one dimension zero. It is holomorphic. So the I, the zero points of omega is isolated set. So as an ODE is the equation, this equation is our original definition. It's equivalent to this because this is a uh, useful, a uh, lot useful. So using this notation, we can define uh, what is the holomorphic solution. So if C is a holomorphic curve, uh, here C is not necessarily compact. It is not necessarily algebraic. So C is just a holomorphic curve. C is a solution of this equation if and only if 
the restriction of the form to C is identity zero. So this is uh, using geometry. It is very uh, easy to define the solution. Yeah, so this is why I use uh, omega a lot of use alpha. Because alpha contains some one dimensional zero. So if the C is a uh, kind of I'm just saying that they're not equivalent. Oh the the, the solution is equivalent. The S is an equation. No, because it's <laughs> S is zero, C is the solution of alpha is zero. Yeah, yeah, you so C is a solution of this I use this definition, not the restriction of he, here. So otherwise, it uh, make a confusion. That's a definition. Yeah, this is a definition. I use this as a definition. Uh, so, uh, usually, we denote uh, this f of the set of holomorphic solutions. So usually, uh, this is called the foliation. The foliation on the algebraic surface or compact, uh, complex surface. So holomorphic foliation is just the solution of a holomorphic solution of an OD. So use uh, omega, the notation omega, the singularity of the uh, OD is exactly the zero set of the uh, of omega. So this is an uh, isolated So what's the uh, structure of the uh, holomorphic foliation or the holomorphic solutions, the set of holomorphic solutions? So if P is not a singular point, uh, then there, e e there exists a solution, a curve, so exactly one curve, one solution. This curve is smooth at P. Uh, actually, at any point, we can find a solution. So the union of the solutions is exactly the set of uh, the surface. So it looks like this. This is a smooth point. So there is only one solution, and the solution is smooth at this point. But here, uh, the solution is, uh, there are infinitely number of solutions. So Pangori called the least singular point is a diacritical singular point. So uh, the, the ODE is related to linear systems on the algebraic surface. So a linear system uh, here, dimension is one, so without a fixed part. So this linear system gives a rational function. So this is a non-constant rational function. Actually, the linear system is defined by this function. Uh, it, it is generated by the zero divisor and the pole divisors. So from the function, we can uh, get a one form, rational one form here. So this, because phi is not a constant function, this is non-zero, uh, it's a non-zero form. So this form gives a different uh, ODE on the algebraic surface. So what is the solution of the, this ODE? It is not uh, difficult to check. The solution of this ODE is exactly the linear system. So from this point of view, uh, the study of one dimensional linear system is uh, exactly part of the study of the ODE. So the so this kind of uh, OD is very special. It is, uh, the solution is algebraic. In general, the solution is not necessarily algebraic. Maybe in the set, there's low uh, algebraic curves in the solution set, in the foliations. So this is, uh, uh, this kind of OD is called algebraically integrable. If all of the solutions of, uh, of this equation are algebraic curves. So this is uh, equivalent to saying that this one is a linear system. Uh, this is equivalent to that the 
the one form alpha is equal to this omega uh, phi and uh, psi uh, rational functions. Uh, higher genus, yeah, yeah, it, it's possible, but the the, the curve in the linear system is not necessarily connected. Connected component. Component of the curve. <coughs> and this is a family, not necessarily linear. Yeah. In this case, uh, for example, if this is a vibration, for example, see, you will find uh, find the rational function here to Q1. Yeah. This is a cover. Then this one is a rational function. This function, the d phi and the df. The solution is the same. But in the case of the linear system, the leaves are just the curves in the linear system. Exactly. Uh, Before, in the example with over Q1, mm -hmm. these are the curves in the linear system. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, but if you, have base, if you have some isolated base points, so you have infinitely many leaves uh, through these base uh, points. Yes, you're right. And you say that it's not possible that uh, for a smooth point pass uh, infinitely many leaves, just one smooth leaf. Uh, one through, uh, through a smooth point, a long singular point. But singular? Singular point may be uh, finite number of solutions or infinite number. Solutions. But I so think that you can introduce some singularity. By yeah, in this case, there's no. Uh, point, not in the sense of similar, but, uh, and in this case, there's no uh, intersection point. And this uh, better singular point. Uh, okay, so. <coughs> I was confused because I thought singular point was a singular point of the surface. No, it's singular point in the sense of uh, dynamical systems. I mean, yeah, yeah, the base point is viewed as a singular point. <laughs> ah, sorry. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> Uh, actually, Taubo studied the number of uh, algebraic curves in this set, uh, but the equation is defined over P2. And this is a generalization. If this set contains at least the least number of algebraic curves, then the ODE is algebraic. This means all of the solutions are algebraic. Okay, Pangori studied this pr uh, problem nearly. We know uh, he used a real, geom uh, real geometry to study this ODE. Actually, he studied this ODE by using complex geometry. He has uh, three papers on this. What is uh, this idea of Pangori? From our definition, the uh, differential equations are divided into two classes. One is algebraic. The other is not algebraic. So the first one is algebraic. The algebraic differential equation, the study is equivalent to the linear study, the study of the linear system. So the study of this one and this one are equivalent. So this is equivalent to this study. Pangre's idea is uh, using the geometry of a linear system to study this equation then try to generalize the result to general equation. This is Pangaris' suggestion. He suggests to study the general ODE by using the geometry of the linear system. But the rotation is not using linear system. This is a real rotation. They use a, a rational functions. Actually, uh, you, you can find this uh, suggestion in Herbert's, Herbert's uh, problem, number 16. He suggested the same method, using the family of curves to study uh, the ODE over real number of it. Yeah, this, uh, how you explain the Poincare suggestion? I mean, I, you want to study case B. Yeah. Using the geometry of what? Of linear system, a family of curves. Of which linear system? Uh, linear system only uh, in this uh, in the first in this case we have the linear system, but in the general case we have no linear system. The yeah. so Pangaris' idea is 
from the special one, you can find some, for example, if you can prove the genus, the genus of this linear system depends only on the differential equation. It is independent of the, uh, of the solution, uh, phi. It is dependent only on this one. Then you can generalize this to the general case. So if you can find the formula to compute the genus, the formula depends only on the, this equation. It is independent of the function. Then you can define similarly the genus for any ODE. This is a uh, Pangre's idea. <coughs> OK, uh, let's recall uh, the geometry of linear systems, the birational geometry of linear systems. Some of the geometry can be generalized to ODE, some a lot. For example, the genus, you cannot be uh, generalized. Genus is not an uh, invariant of the equation, differential equation. It is an invariant of the rational function, but it's not, not an invariant of the differential equation. Oh, the first is the uh, singularities of the linear system. So we just say the singularity contains two types. One type is a singular points of a curve in the linear system. The other type is the base point of the linear system. So uh, using algebraic geometry, we need to resolve the singularities. So the first step is to resolve this kind of singularity, base points. Then we get a, a, a holomorphic map, a morphism from a Lewis surface to P1. So usually we using stem factorization we get uh, a vibration. This is a real vibration. The second step, usually we need to blow up the surface X2 at the singular point of the fibers. Then we get a little vibration. The vibration is called the normal crossing vibration. This means every fiber uh, are normal crossing divisors. So this is the geometric method to resolve the singularities. So this kind of uh, things can be generalized to OD. OK, the next is the uh, minimal, uh, relative minimal vibrations. So the relative, relatively minimal means uh, in any fiber, we, can, we, can, uh, we have lower minus one curve. We have a minimal normal crossing vibration. This means. In the fiber, if you have a uh, minus one curve in the fiber, it's a normal crossing vibration. Every fiber is a normal crossing divisor. If you have such a minus one curve, then this curve must uh, intersect with uh, the others at least three points. So otherwise, you can contract this minus one curve. You obtain a little uh, normal crossing vibration. Are you assuming that the fibers are reduced? Uh, the fiber. Oh. I assume that the fibers are reduced. Curves. No, no, no. Otherwise, you, you need a semi stable. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so, what does it mean with the other components? Uh, because it is a normal cross fiber. So, it is a connected. Sorry, do you mean that the intersection number of E with the fiber minus E is at least 3, or is geometrical statement? Uh, exactly, the number of points, not the, uh, the intersection number. Uh. So we know the minimum order exists. So if the genus G is uh, at least one, then the minimum order is uh, unique. Uh, this is generalized to the OD, can be generalized. So for the vibration, we needed to uh, study some canonical divisors. For example, the relative canonical divisor. This is defined by uh, maybe not just arcade of portion. Someone else maybe use this definition. Actually, the important one is the uh, canonical divisor defined by Serrano. 
This one is different from the relative canonical divisor. It is the relative one minus the discriminant of the vibration. Actually, this one can be generalized to ODE, but the, uh, this, uh, the relative one cannot be. So we have canonical divisors, so we can define the Kodai dimensions. Uh, the Kodai dimension using this one is good, uh, using the relative one is not good. So we have the uh, plural canonical systems. We have two kind of systems. Okay, for the relative one, uh, if f is minimal and the g is uh, positive, then the canonical divisor is an f. And the, we have some results like this. So if this the square, uh, the, this is a big left divisor, a big and left divisor. If and only if f is not uh, locally trivial. So for the relative, relative canonical divisor, uh, sometimes it is very useful to, to, uh, to know the exceptional set of the, this left and the big divisor. This is the set of curves with their intersection with uh, Kf. So because of uh, this statement, if n is big enough, the multiple linear system is space point free. And uh, this linear system defines a contraction map of uh, this set. So this is a birational morphism, if n is big enough. Uh, actually, Cyrillus' uh, study is, can be generalized to OD, but the relative one cannot be generalized. What is the meaning? Uh, for example, Cyrillo studied the Zariski decomposition. If genus is at least one, there is a Zariski decomposition like this. P is the positive part, N is the negative part. Cyrillo proves that if P square is zero, even only if F is isotrivial. The structure of N is uh, clear. He computed the the curves in the uh, set n, in the negative part n. It is just a chain of rational curves, smooth rational curves. So this is the maximal uh, his uh, contained in a single fiber. <coughs> so the last one is not contained in the his chain. So Cyrus' result, if P is positive, uh, the P is bigger than F, he computed the exceptional set. This is a set of uh, rational curves. So here is the con connected components. EI is the connected components. He proves that EI can be contracted to uh, a rational singular point. So because of this, uh, he proved if n is big enough, this linear system is space point free. Of course, p is a rational divisor. N should be, n p should be an integral divisor. Uh, if n is uh, big enough, this one defines the contraction map of the cur curves in this exception set. So the image contains some uh, rational, uh, contains some rational singularities. Okay, uh, so the geometry study of linear system is uh, by using vibration. So we, the first step is to blow up the base points. This, the second step is to uh, blow up the singular points of the fibers. You get a normal crossing vibration. Anyway, we get a vibration. So for a vibration, we have, here we have some relative invariance defined by this. If f is minimal, uh, the genus is positive. This is uh, long negative. So we have some other invariants. I call this uh, modular invariants. It is from defined 
by using the modular space of curves. So the family gives a map from B at the base to the modular space. So on the modular space, we have some uh, special classes. For example, kappa, delta. Delta is the boundary divisor and the hot class. Consider the pullback of these classes and the compute the degree. Uh, formally, compute the degree, you get some uh, numbers. These numbers are called the modular invariance of the vibration. It is a, uh, they are birational invariants. Uh, for ODEs, uh, the relative invariants are a lot of good, but this one is good. Okay, uh, let's see the uh, formulas for the invariants. Could I have some uh, famous formula to compute the modular invariance? The first modular invariance is zero. The second is uh, computed by this. Here, this means uh, the number of single, single fibers of this type. So each of this, uh, this uh, each each single, single fiber of this type, the contribution is nine. So this is the formula. Actually, delta f is just the uh, degree of the um, of the j invariance, j functions. Uh, Kodari has a second formula to compute delta f. This is the modular invariant. Okay, this is genus one case. Genus two case. Uh, Harukawa and Xiao got a formulas like this. So this means we can use singular fibers to compute uh, everything. So from this formula, you can compute the modular invariance. Because if you want to compute the modular invariance, you just assume the vibration uh, is semi-stable. For genus three case, uh, Mosrit has a conjecture for non hyper elliptic vibrations of genus three. This is uh, his conjecture. Uh, if you prove this conjecture, then you know how to compute the modular invariance. But in general, we have low uh, such lies formula. So for the higher genus case, we can only uh, obtain some formula similar to uh, Kodaya's, not so lies like this. <coughs> Uh, hyper uh, several people obtain the formulas for any genus, but the formula is very complicated. Okay, in uh, 20, year, 20 years ago, I, I obtained a generalization of a Kodai's formula. We got a, a formula to compute the modular invariance. Here is the contribution of the singular fibers. Here is the constant. This is the chain numbers. So this is the formula to compute the chain number, the local chain numbers. OK, uh, and this is the legacy we want to see which one can be generalized to ODE. Okay, let's see the, uh, the general ODE. The singularity uh, has two types. The first type is uh, corresponding to the uh, singular point, which is not a base point. So this means there are only f a finite number of solutions at this point. The second point, uh, second, second type is uh, corresponding to the base point. Pangre called this, this singularity, this second type, uh, the diacritical singular point. So the generalization uh, of this resolution of the singularities. This is uh, uh, Sandberg's method. He 
they proved that uh, after a finite of uh, Boolean ops, consider the pullback uh, pull uh, one form, then you get a pullback ODE. So after a finite number of uh, Boolean ops, the pullback of ODE uh, has low singularity of type 2. So this corresponding to the base points of a linear system. The second step is uh, similar to the resolution, the normal, simple normal crossing resolution. So after a uh, number of Boolean ops, the Leo equation uh, has the most simple singularities. So what is the most simple singularity? Seidenberg defined. It is called the reduced singularities. So this corresponding to the normal crossing singularity in the uh, geometric case. Uh, I give the definition. Reduced singularity. What is the reduced singularity? We can assume p the coordinates is uh, uh, the origin. So we can uh, change the ODE using this form. This uh, this form because p is a singular point, so uh, we have low constant uh, term. So we have the linear term. Linear term gives a matrix. This matrix has two eigenvalues. Uh, now we can define the, uh, the, the reduced singularity. The signal point is called reduced if at least one of the eigenvalues uh, is non-zero. For example, if lambda 2 is non-zero. Then the, the ratio of the, the two uh, eigenvalues it's not a positive rational number. So this is a nature. This is not a nature. No. So why we have uh, this strange condition here? <coughs> so if we consider the uh, vibration case, the vibration is, is given by. So the orange is a singular point of the fiber. So the corresponding differential equation we differentiate this one t is a constant so this is a x a minus 1 y dx plus b dy equals 0 so as an equation we cancel the uh, common zero common uh, divisors so we get we So using uh, you take d log, you take d, uh, d log, yeah, 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 yeah. So more, more direct, yeah. more simple. Okay, then you we have uh, d y d x equals d y d y a uh, b x a y. So this this one corresponding to x. So in this case, the matrix is uh, B0, 0, 0, minus A. So two eigenvalues, one is A, one, one is B, the other is minus A. So the ratio is a negative rational number. So this is why uh, we require this. If this is a positive rational number, uh, and it's corresponding to the singularity of this type, So if this kind of similarity you can uh, do in the, uh, you can block up it, then you, you get uh, the reduced similarity of the finite number of uh, playing ops. The calculation is clear. Yeah. But uh, you don't uh, you don't allow a positive rational number, but here it's negative. Yeah, only negative. Because negative corresponding to the normal crossing case in a geometric case. So you're explaining that the negative rational number can occur. Uh, yeah, this is. Assuming that the positive rational number with this argument. Yeah, yeah, you, you can uh, bring up several times that you get the, the, 
the, the uh, negative one. This is the resolution of the singularities of a rational function. So if you, you have this kind of rational function, of, after a finite number of blink ups, you, you, you get the singularity of this type. So this is why we have this strange condition here. So there are two resolutions. One is for uh, linear systems. The other is for ODEs. So if the ODE is algebraically integrable, this means it is from a rational function, then we can say that the two resolutions are the same. The resolution of the diacritic singular points is equivalent to the resolution of the base points. But may I add something? Because I think you wanted to show, you have shown that these are good, OK? And the only thing which maybe you wanted to say was that if P is negative, mm -hmm. you multiply, if you have, OK, if P is negative is the same thing, then you have like uh, x to the a equal t y to the b, where a and b are positive, and so you get infinitely many curves. So you could have pushed that analysis yeah. to show that also the case where the ratio is positive does not occur. Because you get x to the a equal lambda y to the b with a and b positive, and the ratio is minus b over a. And you are right. Yeah. Sandberg proved uh, this can be resolved. Mm. <coughs> so the, the, the two kind of singularities can be resolved by uh, the same method. The second step is, uh, is the same. The, re the resolution of the re uh, non-reduced singularity, the resolution of long normal crossing singularity, these are the same. If the equation, uh, if the ODE is algebraically integrable, So this uh, ODE has low diacritic points is equivalent to the linear system has low base points. The equation ODE is reduced even only if phi is a normal crossing vibration. Because in this case, reduced has low, uh, low base points, the corresponding case. So it's a vibration. So reduced means normal crossing. So this means the resolution of the singularities can be generalized to ODEs. Okay, how to define the, model, uh, the minimum model of the uh, ODE? So we consider uh, minus one curve on the surface X. We blow down this curve, we get a new surface X prime. So the one form on x induces a one form on x prime. So this means an ODE on x induces an ODE on x prime. So alpha prime is the induced uh, form. So the equation is called relatively minimal if the equation is reduced. So in, in ODE case, we only consider the normal crossing uh, vibration the corresponding case. So for any minus one curve, um, yeah. it's not reduced. If you blow down this, the Leo equation is not reduced. So this means the relatively minimal. Uh, we can also define the minimal, uh, absolutely minimal, but we don't use it. Anyway, the, this one is, uh, the existence is clear. We can pull down a finite number of minus one curves. You get a reduced, a reduced one, a minimal one. Uh, the uniqueness <coughs> there are, uh, it is not necessarily unique. The minimal model in some cases they are not unique, but this uh, can be classified. These are ODEs. For example, if the ODE is coming from a rational surface, the ruling coming from the ruling, then the, the minimum model is not unique. Can you yeah, yeah, yes. 
So uh, which kind of global data can be generalized? So one is the divisor of the rational form. I define this divisor. The second global data is the canonical divisor of the uh, rational form. Uh, <coughs> so this is defined uh, uh, by this. This is a global data. The degree of the, uh, the number of singular points, the degree of the, this uh, zero dimension subscreen. So if in the ODE case, we want to define the Kodai dimension, but we can, we can only use the minimum model to, to define it. Otherwise, uh, the definition is not, not unique. So this is a necessary condition to define a unique Kodai dimension. So we define the, if alpha is reduced, we can define directly by using the canonical divisor. If alpha is not reduced, if the equation is not reduced, we choose a one uh, reduced model or minimal model to uh, define the Kodai dimension. So the Kodai dimension is uh, generalized. So what is the property of the canonical divisor in the, oh, I'm talking about OD or linear system? <coughs> okay, the first result is due to Miyoka. If the canonical divisor is not pseudo effective, here we assume alpha is a reduced, uh, is a minimum uh, OD, relatively minimum OD. So if this is not pseudo effective, if and only if it is uh, algebraic, the corresponding vibration is uh, a rational vibration. So it's a P1 vibration. The other case, if K alpha is uh, pseudo effective, so this means we have Zariski decomposition like this. Uh, under this condition, we have this Zariski decomposition. Uh, yes, yes. So in this case, the uh, negative part quite similar to the vibration case. Consists of, N consists of uh, uh, his boyon strings. When this is not in a fiber, the fiber in, in, in the ODE case, the fiber means uh, the curve in the solution. So this means this one is contained in the solution set. Okay, uh, if P is square is, if P is a left and a big divisor, P is left by definition, P is left. If it is big, then we need to consider the exceptional set of P. So E i is the uh, connected components. But in this case, we have two kind of uh, exceptional curves. One, E j can be contracted to rational singular points. So this is similar to the vibration case. But the other case, E j is of type N. This means a curve like this. A, chain, uh, a circle, this is P1. But this is not necessarily minus two curve, otherwise it's a elliptic vibration, a, a fiber, it's a fiber. Here is a, a negative curve, it can be contracted to a point. So this is a rational curve, but it's not a minus two curve. These are the cards for the compactified modular surfaces, right? Yes, yes. But the second case exists for ODEs. Okay, uh, the next is to try to generalize the formulas. So for this generalization, we give some uh, two notations. For a rational number, we define alpha. R is a rational number, we define the two numbers. The second one is called the dedicated number. 
So you can check uh, beta r uh, r and the beta r minus one, the inverse of r, uh, they are equal. The second one is has the same uh, similar property. So this is for a uh, rational number. If if C is not a rational number, we we have low the GCD, then we define chi Z like this without this term. Then we're trying to uh, define the trend numbers of the of an OD. So this this corresponding to the modular invariance of vibration. So this means for a trend a fire for a rational one form, non-zero rational one form, we can define three uh, numbers. They are rational numbers, and uh, they are non-negative rational numbers. So here uh, we we define this. This is the canonical divisor of uh, the one form. This uh, p is a singular point. If p is a singular point on a Hesburgh Young branch, a, a string. Then lambda p is a negative uh, rational number. So this is a rational number. I just defined. Uh, lambda p is the uh, ratio of two eigenvalues. The ratio of the two yeah, if it is reduced, the lambda p cannot be a positive rational number. Uh, here, if p is a uh, on his Young branch, lambda p must be a negative rational number. So we can compute the beta nominal. So this is corresponding to the first chain class, uh, kappa, kappa uh, f in the vibration case. This is corresponding to the delta f. Delta is the boundary divisor. Uh, delta, delta f. I defined it. This is the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So this corresponding to the Hodge class. So I don't go to the details of the the definition of this kind of index. What is BB? BB is a bot a bound index from topology. Okay, these uh, 10 numbers are very nice. For example, we have no source formula. We have the uh, positivity. They are non-negative numbers. We have the, this kind of inequality. So this is uh, from no source, in, equal, uh, no source formula. This one corresponding to the slope inequality. But in this case, we have low uh, genus. So we don't know we don't know how to generalize the slope inequality. So if the uh, foliation is algebraic, it's a family of genus G curves, then it's corresponding to the vibration case. So we have uh, this kind of slope inequality. So these ten numbers are by rational invariance. So if the ODE is algebraically integrable, this means it corresponding to a vibration. Because it is a birational invariance, we can consider the invariance uh, using birational geometry. So then corresponding linear system corresponding to uh, is birational to a vibration. So they have the same invariance. Okay, this means here the result is the 10 numbers are uh, exactly the modular invariance. So this is the generalization of uh, the modular invariance. This means the modular invariance of a vibration is the invariant of a uh, corresponding ODE. But the genus uh, is not a invariant of the ODE. And this is the Miyaka's result I mentioned, rationality. Uh, in the Zariska decomposition, so if k 
alpha is not is pseudo effective. We have the third decomposition. Then our ten numbers is equal to this one. So the ten number is non negative because P is a left divisor. So the first ten number is positive if and only if the corresponding ODE is of general type. This is a general effect about the Zarisk decomposition. So there are some uh, applications of the chain numbers. So if the ODE satisfies satisfy this inequality, if the equation is algebraically integrable, we have, this means this is a family of curves of genus G, then we can get a bound on the uh, upper bound on the G. This is due to the slope inequality. Actually, this is a, a, a problem proposed by Panevi in 1996. So this is the exact uh, form of the inequality. So here, th this is inequality. Actually, uh, Panavis problem is for any ODE, but in, in the general case, we cannot find such an inequality. Uh, someone constructed a counter example. So in, the, in this uh, small slope case, we can bound this genus G. Why we need to uh, have to consider this upper bound? Uh, actually, this is from, coming from a problem proposed by Pangari. Pangari Try to find the geometric conditions on the ODE such that the ODE is algebraic. Uh, but this condition cannot be found. Uh, otherwise, uh, no, there is no counter example, but, uh, but this, this kind of result shows, shows that the Pangaris result may be, uh, conjecture may be is not true. Okay, this example, this theorem, this example shows that the, uh, the inequality, this condition here is necessary. So the non-general type uh, ODEs can be classified uh, due to theorem mathematicians. This is the classification. The next one is uh, general type. I explain this. The Kodai dimension is uh, here. We can assume that the equation is re is minimal, relatively minimal. So we can define the Kodai dimension. So in the minus one, uh, Kodai dimension is minus infinity. The, there are two cases. This is the rational vibration. This is uh, the Hilbert modular vibration, uh, foliation. This is from the uh, Hilbert modular surface. Okay, maybe I will explain later. This case uh, is called the foliation defined by a vector field. Actually, in our notation, this uh, is equivalent to this. Could I dimension one case? There are four classes. So two, these two classes are vibrations, so we know this. Here is the Riccardi foliation, this corresponding to Riccardi uh, ODE. So this the rational vibration is just a vibration of genus zero. The Herbert modular foliation is, uh, is a foliation on the Herbert modular surface. The foliation is induced by one factor. So on H cross H, one factor is a family of uh, complex curves. So the, on the quotient surface, this family of curves induces a family of curves on X. This is the corresponding fiber, uh, foliation. Uh, Ricardi equation uh, is like this. So one... Actually here, Hilbert modular surface 
means more generally any gamma which is re actually reducible with finite volume. Yeah, yeah. It's more general than Hilbert. Oh, uh, I see. Put quotation mark. <laughs> I think it's a fault of Macmillan mm -hmm. or Brunello. So uh, on this surface, you can find the the uh, foliation. The leaf is not a necessarily algebraic curve. Maybe one leaf is a holomorphic curve on X, which is dense in X. So the Riccati uh, equation is this. This is a uh, one coordinate is the coordinate of the fiber of a root surface. And this, uh, this one is clear, so I don't explain what is the induced by a vector field. So this is the uh, ODE, turbulent ODE, corresponding to this. Actually, this is corresponding to a elliptic vibration. The foliation is uh, transverse to the elliptic vibration. So this is a geometric characterization of this foliation. Maybe I have a little time to explain the, the effective result. I just uh, explained the, 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 the computation. So what is the k very amplitudes uh, of a linear system defined by this? So k very amplitudes, uh, the rotation is not good. Other, for, for this case, we need to use minus one very ample <laughs> corresponding to this. So in, in the ODE case, we have this kind of uh, Zarisk decomposition. So in the general type case, this is a left and a big divisor. It is a rational divisor. So we hope to uh, study the corresponding blurry canonical systems of the ODE. And this means study this kind of divisor. So the blurry, blurry canonical system uh, means this or this. So by using the risk technique, and this kind of multiple linear system, you can uh, you can reduce the system to this this case. Here, A is a left and a big divisor. B is a fixed divisor. But uh, a finite a finite number of choices of B. So if N is big. Big enough uh, here, maybe here is M. M is big enough, corresponding to N is big enough. So you only need to study this kind of linear systems. So for this linear, for this linear system, A is a left and a big divisor. If A is just a left, not big, Zarisky has a, a, a theory about the k very embedding of this one by using an elementary method. So we consider the left and the big case. In this case, we have two uh, invariants, two numbers. The first number is defined uh, here is by using the exceptional set, exceptional set of A. So D is from the exceptional set of A. So this number corresponding to uh, this exceptional set. This number is just defined by this. So using the two numbers, we, we can get the effective bound on the general linear system, multiple linear system. So this is the result. If alpha is at least one, then we can, uh, we know that n is big enough, then this is uh, k very ample. <coughs> so the purpose is to use this result to uh, to the ODE case. Okay, the ODE case we know some in some case the exceptional set uh, consists of some curves which can be contracted to a rational single points. So we can use um, Artin's theorem 
this is the characterization of uh, of RT delta RT. So in this case, we can use we can use this uh, general result bigger than one. In the ODE case, we have some uh, better case. This one contains some better curve like this, like this. So in this case, alpha is zero. So we cannot use the uh, result directly. Actually, in this case, the linear system is not a uh, base point of free. So we, you cannot have the base point of free, this kind of uh, result. So this means we need to modify the linear system. We can choose B as a negative device. Negative uh, is the support of this device. Then the linear system will become better. You can uh, use the, this one to prove the, the base point of freeness. So apply the, the three result to the this kind of linear system. Then we we'll get the uh, K very openness of the polar economical system of an OD. Uh, times over. I stop here, thank you. <laughs>